and they're wanting to kick out the others. Then, of course, they're coming in with their boxing gloves, their arms ready to, of course, kick whoever out. So, yes, uh, I suppose that also happens too. But looking for fights doesn't happen too often, though. I can probably count on my hands how many times I've seen... Um, say, li male lions fighting with one another or male leopards fighting with one another. It's quite a rare sighting. So we're, we're still going to sit with Hosanna and see how close he's going to get now that he's got a bit more cover with the tall grass. Scott has moved away from tracking and he's found something that a bird will build. Yes, we certainly have that kind of dark blob that Senzo is busy zooming into is the nest of a blue wax bull. And... Interestingly enough, they use a grass called blue seed grass to build their nests. There's a small little entrance hole. I'm not sure if you can make that out. Tiny little entrance hole. And what caught my attention and why I wanted to take a closer look at this nest is that these birds are very, very clever in that they very often build their nest above a highly aggressive wasp called the Vespid Wasp nest. And that means any predator trying to get into the nest will have to get past the wasps first. So they've got their own private security company um, that helps them but thankfully well not thankfully but in this case there wasn't a Vespid's wasp nest which it meant that I could probe my little pork sausage fingers into the nest to see if there was anything in there and lo and behold there was a tiny little egg have you ever seen an egg this small how cool it is absolutely minute and imagine how cute the little baby is that hatches out of this thing I mean, it's hard to believe that a bird could hatch out of such a small egg. I would have thought that this was like a gecko's egg or a lizard's egg. So I'm going to pop it back in there. There were, I think, three eggs in total in there. And if any of you are concerned by me handling an egg, you shouldn't be because picking up an egg and putting it back in its nest is not going to have any negative impacts on that chick's life. The parents are going to have no idea if and when they do come back. Um definitely something I'm going to keep an eye on. Um, there's m a chance that the nest was abandoned uh, or has been abandoned. When I put my fingers in initially the eggs were completely cold. Um, who knows um, whether both the parents needed to go out and feed and they're going to come back and incubate later or maybe they've abandoned the nest. Time will tell but now that I know where it is I'll be able to monitor it a bit more closely and that's quite exciting I think. It's the first uh, wax wool nest I found this season and I've been looking quite hard for them and spending a lot of time on foot so quite relieved that at least one family of blue wax bulls seems to be trying to make some more wonderful wonderful stuff how cool is that sighting with Hosanna and the buffalo sounded incredible <laughs> hi Dion You've mentioned that you, it would take uh, lots of those to make an omelette. Yes, I would say that you would need about 20 of those to just create one kind of chicken egg. They'd be quite nice in a salad, though. Um, you know, a smaller version of a quail's egg. Um, but I wouldn't like to be the person who has to painstakingly peel the shell of all of them. That would not be fun. Speaking of which, there's a very useful trick for any of you who like boiled eggs that I like to employ, uh, and that's when you need to take the shell off the egg. You kind of do the usual crumble, crunch, 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 so the shell gets soft, and then you, you use a teaspoon, and you slide the teaspoon in, uh, into the eggshell, and then kind of just swivel it all the way around, and then, oops, pull the eggshell off. Very useful trick. It's worth trying right now, actually. Boil an egg and try it, if you haven't tried it before. <laughs> Okay. There is a track of a snake that slithered across the road here. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see the kind of slither marks here. AB, you've asked me to promise you that I'll f keep uh, following up on that nest. And yes, I promise that I will do that, but only if you promise to remind me when you're watching. How's that for a deal? <laughs> My memory is not great, so forgive me. That's why I need your help reminding me. <laughs> but yes, we'd be happy to do that. Another thing that I need reminders of is my plan to spend time with Janet Jackson when there's no other action about in the evening. I want to go and do a stake out there at the cavity of her mansion in a dead tree and see what happens when she comes out 
I'm guessing because, you know, we have spent quite a lot of time in and around her with the vehicle that she should already be kind of semi-ish habituated. So I'm hoping that she'll let us follow her as she goes about her evening exploits. That's another thing I'd like to do at some point in time when the situation allows for it. Good stuff. Well, there's great news. We don't very often see reptiles here, but Steve seems to be on fire today. He found a snake earlier this morning, and I'm going to leave it as a surprise what he's found for you now. Thank you very much, Scotty. Yes, indeed, we have found an egg specialist in the form of a water monitor lizard. And he is, or she, is really enjoying the rays of the sun beating down on the ectothermic skin. Just sitting here next to a small little pan, we have spent the last little while searching in vain for any sign of Tundi, and we were on Cheetah Cut Line trying to have a look if there's any tracks coming out, and whatever was there was obliterated by a herd, or an enormous herd of elephant. There was absolutely no other sign on the road there so being quite far down south we've decided we're going to cross over into Chitwa to have a look at the dam and see what might be provided for us there and on coming in eagle eyes Seb spotted this beautiful water monitor and when I say egg specialist these are responsible for together with the rock monitor they are hugely specialized in attacking nests um, the water monitor is really really a, quite a, a, a voracious predator of crocodile nests and uh, probably one of the biggest risks to turtles or should I say tortoises um, a lot of birds in their nests as well any ground nesting bird these guys with their tongue scooping forward not that it's doing so right now the Jacobson organ in the roof of the mouth assists them in finding all sorts of traces and signs of of birds and animals for them to devour Jason has a question, is it only felines that have the organ of Jacobson? No, it's negative. Most animals actually do. Um, all of the snakes and lizards, the reason where you see snakes flicking their tongue out of their mouth and pulling it back in is 100% to activate that organ. Uh, monitor lizards do it very, very well as well. And we see it's only very evident in cats because of that response that they do. The phlegm and grimace when they are tasting or testing urine. But you see it in quite noticeably in buffalo, giraffe, zebra, uh, even in most domesticated cattle. Or should I say all domesticated cattle, sheep. But most animals have got the organ of Jacobson, and there's even talk and speculation of the fact that humans have a remnant of an organ of Jacobson in the back of their mouth. But uh, that has been proven wrong and proven right, and is quite an interesting debate, which I'm not going to get into right now. But the purpose of it is to sense and pick up on chemicals in the environment, and snakes can actually follow the trail of pretty much anything with that organ of Jacobson. Lorne would like to know what preys are monitor lizards and that's very interesting because I'm not sure how long ago it was but I know during TV show we showed some clips and one of them was of a Hosanna and he had caught a monitor. I'm unsure whether it was water or a rock monitor but he was super proud of himself and he had caught it and he did not want to share it with his sister or with his mother and it was quite a sized animal for him at the time I think he was probably about one or so and it was quite something to see him dragging that monster off but probably the biggest threat to monitor lizards is the Marshall Eagle Marshall Eagles are one of their favorite preys or prey items is monitors and they do have the ability to pick them up and carry them back to their nest or to a perch uh, monitor lizards themselves are probably quite sort of predatory or cannibalistic for themselves and looks like that terrapin is really taking some chances <laughs> I doubt the monitor would eat the terrapin but it's uncertain I've never seen this interaction before but lions and leopards would most definitely eat monitors if they can catch them 
um, and then crocodiles would kill them if they could. And birds of prey are probably the biggest threat to a monitor. As you see him sitting there on the bank, he's very exposed. Robin, it is not a turtle, it is a terrapin. A terrapin is a fresh water chelonian. Uh, tortoises are land based, terrapins are fresh water, and tort uh, turtles are sea dwelling, if I have got that correct. And one thing that is for sure is that terrapins smell absolutely terrible. And uh, one of the reasons we do not pick tortoises up in the environment is that they will void. They, they will void their, right? So, Ryan, yes, it's not a turtle. Um, ter definitely a terrapin. Uh, terrapins have the ability to turn their head sideways. Turtles are unable to retract their head in any way into the shell. And so, terrapins are renowned for feeding on carrion in water. Uh, they, they actually pick up a very foul smell. It's something, it is the one animal in the world you should never touch. Not purely from an ethical point of view, but it will void its contents on you and there is absolutely nothing you can do to wash that smell off. So I would avoid picking them up as much as possible. I once witnessed an elephant, it was a young elephant bull, was busy drinking at a pan, not too dissimilar from this and he was smelling and a terrapin kind of paddled past him or walked past him and the elephant gave the terrapin a little whiff and the elephant had this little fright of shock and then just <laughs> stepped on the terrapin and needless to say that was the last movement the terrapin ever made so the smell that those things give off not ideal you do not want to touch them so I think the monitor might know that uh, it is a difficult thing not just to eat, but to try and swallow. Cat brag, how big do terrapins get? Well, a lot bigger than that. That is a little baby terrapin. Um, I'm trying to work out sort of a size, but I would say probably about 20 to 30 centimeters, I would say. So about a foot at the most. Uh, but then that is the terrapins that I know of in South Africa. They don't get as large as the, the leopard tortoise that we have. Um, but they do get a decent enough size and they are big enough to be squashed by elephants. So that is marvelous. We, as I mentioned, we are making our way into Chitwa, see if we can find anything fantastic around the dam. And while we do so, we go back over to Taylor to see what her buffalo and her leopard are up to. Well, I think the game might be up for Hosanna as the buffalo have all sort of started snorting and looking straight into his direction. Whether the wind swirled and his scent blew down towards them or whether they physically saw him move because he did st he had s stood up for quite a bit and sort of exposed his entire body. But he's definitely got the buffalo thinking that something may be slinking through the grass. No, there they all are. Some of them looking a little bit more relaxed, not too worried, but there's a, a couple of others that had their eyes fixated in the patch of grass. But they haven't quite rallied one another up just yet, which is typically what happens within a herd, is if they do think that there's lions or anything, normally they all come together, form a wall, an impenetrable wall, in fact, and then march towards whatever is scaring them. And they go and have a little look. And, well, if it's a threat, well, then they chase it. But like I said earlier, luckily for Hosanna, um, I'm not worried about him getting injured by one of these buffalo, unless he's silly enough to run into the herd and grab a youngster. But if they do charge him, there are plenty of trees that he can sort of climb up. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a massive tree. He's just got to be a bit taller than the buffalo, and the tree's got to be a bit stronger in case those buffalo decide to thrash it. He needs to be able to hold on. But there's plenty of marula trees that a buffalo... Or all of these buffalo could definitely not push down so he'll be fine and he's quick off the mark remember leopards have got a great acceleration speed and they're so agile and nimble they can bob and weave through the grass fairly quickly there is a little calf too there's a couple of them in fact now that we can see they stood up but they're being hidden in and amongst the herd there's one and there is even another one just off to the left slightly an even younger calf and that's just ideally what Hosan is probably eyeing out but you can see, <laughs> you have to be very brave. 
Not even bravery. It would be stupidity to run through there. And he knows that, though. He's not going to do it. I mean, you don't even see lions charging in to a herd like this because they know they're going to get caught and they're going to get a horn in the wrong place. And it could potentially end their life by doing something like that, which is why we often see lions waiting and trying to separate the herd or waiting for a, um, a straggler, one that can't quite keep up. And so that there's a bit of distance between the rest of the herd and the one that they're going for gives them a chance, of course, to bring it down and to essentially suffocate it. Now they're very uneasy now. Now, Lisa, you're wondering what is the organ of Jacobson? And um, Steve was discussing it a little bit earlier. Well, all the mammal species that we're looking at now have, have got this organ. It's essentially situated between their front teeth and their nose. So sort of up in their gums, somewhere in there. And it's a sensory organ. So have you ever seen a horse that you think is maybe trying to smile at you and it takes its top lip and it turns it up and basically pushes it up and it exposes its, it exposes its teeth, that's called a phlegm and grimace. So animals will do that in order to test scents and the scent that they're specifically looking for is to see if females are coming into estrus or not, whether they're in heat or season, ready to be mated with and, and, and that's the, the use of the, the Jacobson organ. So it's a very important um, organ to, uh, to mammals. We have one in the fetus as well but we lose it. Um, of course, we, we don't really need it, do we? So we can all communicate with one another. So yeah, so there we go. That is the Jacobson organ. And then the outward expression is the phlegm and grimace. I always use horses as an example because I feel like a horse does it the best. It was my favorite thing. Every time I'd know I'd put like a new perfume or something on, my horses would come and of course they nuzzle up to you. Horses are also quite affectionate. And... You could just see they maybe licked your arm where you, maybe you'd sprayed something or they didn't like the, the taste or the scent of that and then that lip goes all the way up and they pull faces and stretch their heads up, put their point their heads towards the sky. It was one of my favorite things. But unfortunately, when I had horses when I was younger, I had no idea why they were doing this. Now I do, of course. Now I completely understand. Buffalo, I can see you're not sure about what's really going on. So they're up and down. Right, I'm going to quickly send you across to Steve to see his pigs run away. Thank you, Taylor. Well, we have got some pigs indeed. We're at the clearing just above Chitra Dam, and we've got some warthog. And they don't quite know what they're doing, but they're running up and down. Doesn't seem to be any disturbance anywhere. There's small little sounder of pigs. We found also a wildebeest which is the first one I've seen since being back and he's grazing quite communally here with our impala or the impala on Chitra, a group of males and the brindled gnu you can see by the very sort of the stripy nature to the side of his fur there almost as if he has been on a barbecue there we go. He might rub his, his horn or his eye area against the side of that. Male wildebeest are quite territorial and they like to rub the, not just the pedal gland, which is underneath the toes, but also the one around the eye, the preorbital gland. He likes to rub that. And wildebeest rely heavily on scent as a form of territorial display. And secondly to scent is their posturing, their big their size posturing they'll stand broadside to another male and show them how big he is and if a male does manage to succeed in in um, getting hold of some females he'll rub his face against them to basically make him them smell like he does sort of claiming ownership and wildebeest love these open areas with quite shortly cropped grass they eat it quite low down to the bottom and impala and wildebeest can feed quite similarly like that and also these open clearings offer them quite a bit of security black GFZ is 
potentially a new viewer, you're asking how did we switch cameras? Well, we are live coming to you from Juma in the in South Africa in the Sabi Sands Kruger National Park, and we have got a, a, an individual on walk with a camera, and then Taylor with another camera on another vehicle. She is with a leopard and buffalo, and we are another vehicle not too far away but at another dam and another area and a different camera so we have the potential to offer you a multiple of streams as the action comes from one side to the other uh, our directors in the final control back at home base are jumping between us and keeping things working and making sure that the action is relevant and whatever questions you might feel do you feel or you might feed through they feed to us dependent on the relevance. If you start asking me about hippo when we're looking at wildebeest, your question probably will not be asked. So I hope that answers your question. Um, the directors are there with very intricate machines and buttons and all sorts of amazing technology that I do not understand. But I am not paid to understand that. I am paid to talk and to guide and to interpret the wilderness and its environment. So I hope that answers your question. We're having a wonderful morning here. The cloud cover is pulled in. Seb was almost complaining about how hot it is. And uh, now the clouds have moved in. And potentially the cold front that I've been talking about is making its way in. We might have an afternoon of rainfall. It's very hard to say, but with that cloud cover building in after a very hot morning and a hot day yesterday, it's quite normal for cold front and to preclude or to, 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 to precede the cold front, we often get some light thunderstorms and showers, which we would really, really like to fill up the dams and to get a little bit more green in the environment before the long winter months set in. Here we are at Chitra Dam, as said before. There are definitely hippos there, as there always are. And we are surrounded by Impala. It's wonderful. We're spoiled for choice about what to look at here. But it is always a nice place to come. And if you're looking for animals, the best place to check is the water holes. And in this case, the Chitra Dam, which is probably the largest source of water in the area. And we've had marvelous sightings here of elephants swimming and all sorts of interesting bird life and swarms of animals coming down to drink because water is the currency of life. Justin would like to know, are there any cobra? And as we say that, an elephant comes in from the right-hand side over there. I'm not sure if you can get it, Seb, but we might reposition. Justin would like to know if there are any cobras. Let me just move up an inch, because this elephant is having a bit of a hard time with the impala. He doesn't like them and has chased them away. Justin, yes, we do have cobras. Uh, there are potentially two main species that we can find here, one being the Mozambican spitting cobra. Tell me when you're happy there, Seb. And the second one being the Cape Cobra. Um, I have not seen a Cape Cobra before in the Kruger National Park, but this Mozambican spitting cobra is very, very common. And sorry, then there's a third one, the snouted cobra, which I have seen quite regularly as well. I haven't seen a, a cobra in some months though. Let me just go forward a little bit more. It looks like a young bull. He's a little bit grumpy towards the, the impala there, which is it's what he does. He's trying to show that he is the boss, even though I think it's a young bull. Considering that it's on its own, not very big, he's walking right towards us. There we go, chasing the impala. When you're as big as an elephant, you do what you like. So hopefully he'll come towards us because the young bulls like this are often really, really fun when it comes to being around the vehicle because they also think they can chase us off with a few little bit of shakes of the head because it seems to work for all the other animals and when mum does it it's terrifying and everybody runs look at these impala coming from the back the elephant is chasing them isn't this marvelous Woo. <laughs> did you hear him trumpet there 
there's a whole lot of young impala that are doing their sort of rocking horse gait, which is a, a form of behavior that they will practice, but it's something that they do when they see a cheetah or a wild dog, and it's basically showing the animal how fit they are. Look how strong my legs are. I can outrun you. Look at me go. And they are doing it around the elephant, and he's getting most upset. Michelle, I agree. I love cheeky elephants. I absolutely love them because there's, there's always a bit of human behavior that you can see in there. And like a young boy trying to assert himself, he's full of attitude and full of ego. And <laughs> he's, he thinks he's far bigger than he really is, but he is far bigger than most things he comes across. And a bull of that age has potentially reached sort of a sexual maturity and a level of sexual interest in his sisters and his mom or granny will tell him to go packing. It's time for you to go walking my boy and go fend for yourself. And he is ch <laughs> he is chasing the impala who are not too perturbed by him because uh, they know he's not trying to eat them and they have got no issue escaping him because they are very, very fast. Probably one of the fastest antelope in the area. And an elephant, as fast as they might seem, are no match for the leaping and bounding gait of a springing impala. <laughs> There you go, you see the head shake. All these signs are signs that if a female in a breeding herd were doing, I'd be keeping very well clear. Because those are signs of annoyance, signs of, of warning that are basically indicating unhappiness. And an unhappy elephant is not an elephant you want to get too close to. But when they are young, they are just trying to practice the things mum has shown them. And... Uh, it works for the Impala, but it won't work for me. So we are going to go back over to Scott. We're going to leave our elephant. We'll stay here for a little while longer. And if anything else comes about, we will let you know shortly. But in the meantime, let's go back to Scott for an update. Oh, that sounded like a wonderful sighting of that mischievous young bull giving the Impala a hard time. We're just strolling through an open meadow, enjoying the fact that there's a bit of cloud cover giving us a cool relief for the time being and just been chatting with Senzo and Rexon about tales from Nikki and my previous job up in Kenya managing a camp there a few funny stories from along the way so that's what we've been up to we did find some tracks of in all likelihood the Shidulu female where she came down and drank at a small little uh, mud wallow but they weren't very fresh but just useful to know which area she's moving in. Oh, stop right there. It seems like... This to me looks like a leopard track. But I think what will be best is for us to go onto the road over here where we're going to have some harder soil where we can get a better idea. Yeah, it is definitely leopard tracks. Battling to tell whether it's a male or a female for now. Oh yeah, it looks like a male. And a male moving through this area would possibly be Tumba, who's been spending time in this kind of area of Juma. So we're going to stop and try and work out exactly where he's gone from here and send you across to... to... to somebody to Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scotty. Right. Now, this is exciting because look how close Hosanna is. He is exceptionally close. I can't actually see what's on the monitor. That's what that sound was. It's me cleaning. <laughs> Obviously. Because I have a problem. He's right there. So he was very clever in the sense that he didn't make a move until all those buffalo settled down and stopped sort of snorting in his direction. And good move on the buffalo, though, just to be cautious. They, they definitely have an idea that something's around, but they're not sure. So they, they're watching very closely, very carefully, making sure that nobody can sneak up to them. And he's using fallen branches, courtesy of the elephants. He's using the tall grass. But again... 
I, I don't know what he's doing. I mean, now I can't even see any of the buffalo calves. They really are tucked in the middle. So he's going to have to do a huge leap over the top of some adult buffalo first and, I don't know, then grab a little calf from the middle. That would be spectacular. But I doubt he's going to do that. Maybe he's seen something else, but I, I don't think so. It could be a little Stienbok or a Dacre or herd of Impala also venturing through here. That's not impossible. Buffalo, I feel like you haven't chosen a good spot to race for the day. Maybe choose an area with a few more big trees that can cast better shadows. Because the heat is really going to bother the buffalo too. Although, I suppose Treehouse Dam is just behind them. So if they get too hot, they can pop on down to the, the watering hole, have a drink, freshen up. Maybe have a little mud wallow too. It looks like his attention is actually completely drawn away now from the buffalo. Hmm. Well, we're going to sit and figure out what Hosanna is looking at. There is a crazy elephant that's chasing around some antelope. Yes, indeed. This elephant is having an absolute ball here. We don't know what he's doing, but the impala are running up and down, up and down, and he's getting super annoyed with them. <laughs> They are behaving in a manner that indicates they've seen something like a wild dog or a cheetah. That's the behavior they are behaving. But they're running up and down, up and down, up and down, as if they're running on a straight track. They're turning left, then they're coming all the way back again. And it's infuriating, this young elephant bull. <laughs> he doesn't know what to make of it. And here they come back again. They come back again. It's almost like they're taunting him. Almost like they're taunting him. <laughs> Here he comes again. <laughs> Shame. Now, from an ethical point of view, these impala are not being very ethical to this elephant's needs. He's shown them warning. He's shown them the warning. And they are not listening. They just keep, uh, keep pushing his buttons. So from a guarding point of view, we're not doing anything wrong here. But if, if you see people with a vehicle doing this to an elephant, something is wrong. You don't ever want to influence their behavior like this. But he, he is having animals run up and down, up and down around him, and he's just losing his mind. It is really quite something to see. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to come back again, Seb. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, here come a few. They're coming again. <laughs> uh, they're doing a bit of a, a circle dance there. It is too funny. Poor Ellie indeed, but too funny. I absolutely love watching young elephant bulls. They've just got so much character. So much character. And they like to throw tantrums. Apologies for the aerial in the shot there. <laughs> Caro, it's like playing with your big brother indeed. Or in my brother's case, he'd do it with me. He would chase me around or he would run around me in circles and I could never catch him. <laughs> it's quite something to behold. He's just disappeared into the bushes there. We might come out a bit here and see if we can if we can see him again. Those impala seem to be calming down. So maybe we can get another look at this elephant and let's see how he behaves when he sees us because he didn't seem too bothered by our vehicle before he was way too busy paying attention to all these running animals and it's not uncommon to see elephants chasing other animals it happens very very commonly in in drought when water resources are very low and water and elephants think it very sort of defensive of a water resource I've I've heard of stories of Oh, that is a very late Lamaki, a very late baby impala over there in front of us. Let's see, the Ellie's just up here on the left. Hi Beyond would like to know if elephants see other animals as competition for food. I've never seen them compete for food. It's water that is the, the resource that they most show aggression towards other animals. 
They will kill buffalo. They will kill all sorts of other animals that get in between them and a very scarce resource. That's the only stress I've ever seen with elephant. They are an enormous animal and they have the ability to push over trees, to feed on the roots, to scrape off the bark, to break the branches down, to feed on the fruits, to rip grass up, feed on the roots and to feed on the grass itself. So they are a very, very adaptable feeder. So no one really can compete with an elephant when it comes to feeding. Um, these impalas though, they have the ability to to browse and to graze and to completely decimate an area if it happens. So a lot of people put uh, emphasis on how impacting the environment. Here yeah, these impala are running back towards him. I don't know what's going on. I think they just, they know that he's getting upset. You, you know, you know that kind of feeling. I know it's not good, but when someone is, is getting annoyed, you somehow just feel the need to just push even more. Don't you? <laughs> Seb does it, says he does it to his daughter all the time. Shame, Seb. <laughs> Ryan would like to know how long it's possible for Impala to run. They can run for, I don't know how far, but the essence behind their running is to gain distance. Um, not just the speed, but the distance away from the predator. So to evade the, the essential stalk and hunt predator, to get a far enough away from them so that that animal does not catch them. So in the case of a lion and a leopard. But when it comes to a cheetah or a wild dog, wild dogs run them into the ground. They run them into exhaustion. And then they catch them and rip them apart, eating them alive. So yes, they can run to exhaustion. And if and what happens quite often in game capture, or used to happen quite often in game capture, is when the helicopters or individuals are capturing animals, they might chase them too far, and then they they dose them with tranquilizers for transportation. And if it hasn't been done properly, if the animals have been pushed too hard and too stressed, and if they're dehydrated, a lot of them can potentially die in transit. So a lot of studies have gone into game capture and into how far animals can run and the stress involved is enormous. Because can you imagine running for your life for as far as you can go and keep going, keep going, keep going and you cannot get away from your pursuer. Um, that leads to all sorts of tension in the muscles and can lead to death. So yes, animals can definitely be overexerted as we see these warthogs crossing the road towards the elephant. It seems everybody wants to play with him today. They're very relaxed pigs, Nicks, indeed. Wait until the elephant sees them. Let's see what he does. <laughs> there we go. The warthogs are moving towards him. He is uh, underneath the marula tree, catching up on his sugar intake for the day. And he seems to have relaxed a little bit more. As we hear the loud churring sound in the background of the crested barbet. There's even a little squirrel just off to the right there. It's fine, just in front of him. Spicy Game would like to know what is a liquid dripping down the side of his face. Now those are temporal glands that you find on elephant and the, the leakage happens due to stress and you quite often find it in must bulls, bulls that are going through a very high sort of testosterone period and the fact that they are streaming out of those temporal glands is because they are stressed. They are moving very, very far distances in search of, of females and they're not eating. Um, in the case of females, I've seen females in only moments of stress, be it um, disruption from their their baby or uh, they've been the baby has been lost for a moment the baby starts screaming and i've seen immediately an entire herd start streaming on the side of the face like that so it's possible that he's a little bit stressed because he's on his own it's the probably one of the first times or first weeks or months in his life that he's on his own so it's due to stress and probably the fact that these impala have been running around him have caused him a little bit of anxiety and that is showing in the stress marks on the side of the face you find it in females as well when they're stressed for food or water when they're suckling or heavily pregnant they'll also stream over there 
Okay, so we're going to go over to Taylor, who I believe is still with the sauna, playing games with Buffalo. He is, he is, he is, but the Buffalo seem to be on the move. I think they heard me when I said that it's going to be hot and they should probably find an area with some better shade. Well, sauna has got a good spot, though, so even though he's playing games, at least he's keeping cool. I don't know why I said it like that. But now he's being silly because he's exposed himself and there's a cow looking directly at him. Let's see if she's been able to differentiate between the shade, the trees, the grass, and Hosanna. She looks quite pregnant too. She's got a big belly. No? <laughs> looking straight at him but didn't see him. It's amazing what a bit of shade and, and some vegetation can do. Completely concealing himself. And he wasn't moving around too much. So even though he had his head above... Um, Above the grass, they didn't seem to spot him. He's, if he moves too quickly, they might give him away. But they, they, they know that there's something here. They definitely are a bit wary. Hosanna, are you going to just herd them back around to where you need them? He's still fixated on them. Again, okay, I can't see any more of those calves. I think they've all gone up towards the front with mum. Just a couple more lagging behind, and you can see he's stretching up. Maybe he's trying to see if there are any little ones still hanging about. But no buffalo seem to be getting left behind right now, so his plan's not going well. His plan might be different to the buffalo's plan. I'm sure it's different. Sure, but the flies are out as well today. From the little Mapani flies, go away. To the big flies that are sitting on the buffalo poo and then coming to try and sit in our mouth and our eyes. That's always my favorite. That's actually... That's why I come out and that's why I get up in the morning, is to have flies that have sat on either rotting carcasses or on animal feces in your mouth. Best when you swallow one of those. Oh, those are the tastiest. Ugh. Here we go. A couple of them, see, keep looking in this direction. They are alert. I feel like Hosanna's getting bored now of this game, and so are the buffalo. They said, right, everyone's had their fun and games. This has been great, but, uh, but no. <laughs> Ah, oh, goodness. Well, maybe Scott's going to have some leopard luck this morning because the birds are chirping about something. We did hear some birds chirping, and it was just that you're having such an interesting uh, sighting with Hosanna and the buffalo that you didn't come to us. But just as well, because it turned out to be a false alarm. And watch our tents. You don't want to stand in that. This, everyone, is the last thing on the planet you would like to put your feet into. Yeah, that looks ugly. Let me get a stick to try and open it up. It's some lion poo from last night. Sorry, I'm just battling to find a stick. Um, I've got one now. I want to look, get a long one. And this is some lion poop. The lions walked down this road last night. What on earth? Oh, no. What is this? Oh, you know what's happened here? This is a piece of skin, I think, that they have would have kind of coughed out. It's not poop. Look at all the little maggots there. Ugh. Horrifying. I wonder what part of the body this is. It must just be some skin, like I say, some hide. It seems quite tough. Horrible. Anyway, I'm going to flick it off the road so these maggots don't have too much of a hard time finishing it off, doing their job for the community. Yeah. Um, so what was going on with the birds? It actually seemed to be a fight between some white-crested helmet shrikes and a fork-tailed drongo. And... Quite surprised to see those birds fighting because they don't nest in cavities. I've noticed birds that nest in cavities and trees often fight with one another for a cavity. But both drongos and white-crested shell helmet shrikes build their own nests. So who knows what they were fighting about. But an interesting little squabble. And it was also interesting to see how many other birds responded into that area, just like we did, because they thought something else possibly more serious was going on. The big feather, this is not from the birds fighting, because the birds that were fighting were absolutely tiny. And it's not looking in the best nick, this feather. You can see it's a little bit worn. 
and I'm not too sure what bird it's from. Maybe a ground hornbill. I did see some ground hornbills flying through this area a couple of days ago. Anyway, we'll leave that there. Kim, you'd like to know if there are any hummingbirds uh, where we are. No, there's no hummingbirds in Africa. I think they are all in the Americas. Um, but we've got our own kind of fairly similar version called the sunbird. Um, they don't hover like the hummingbirds, but they look quite similar. They've got lots of beautiful bright colors, and they also have a long bill that they do drink nectar out of flowers with. So we will see them from time to time here, but um, yeah, they, they, they're very small and quite tricky to get a view of. So I'm sure if you keep tuning in, though, you will get to see a sunbird at some point point in time. Very good. Hosanna's on the move and so are you. Why don't you go and join them with Taylor. We are on the move. He's just here, in fact. He's following the buffalo now. The buffalo looking at me though because I'm driving off-road. Let's see. Where are you going to go? Are you going to come right in front of the car? Not a surprise for Hosanna. Not afraid of the vehicles at all, but also not interested in them. He's not going to want to jump in. Oh, hang on. You be careful. I think there's a car that's now spotted him. Sorry. Let's see if they saw him. There's one looking straight at him. This is amazing. So I think he's got a strategy here. And he, he's done it once before. It was Hosanna that had the buffalo kill, wasn't it? I'm not making that up. Or was it Tingana? I feel like it was Hosanna. It was Hosanna. So he's done this once before, so I suppose we can't say that we don't know what he's doing. I shouldn't be saying that. Because he could well know exactly what he needs to do. Maybe he's just going to follow them around. Oi! No. Whoops. Maybe he's going to just follow them around, and like I said, until one presents an opportunity where they're not concentrated. They're in the water now! Oh man, Hosanna Banana, I don't know if I want to stay with you. I want to watch the buffaloes wallow because I haven't seen that for a while. Is there a little gap yet? Maybe we can do both. Let's try do both. I feel like we need we need to see all the amazing things. There's probably Yeah. Ah, right, because I'm taking Darby through all the bushes, Darby's got a couple of spider webs on his camera. So he's going to bring a cloth in front of the screen in a minute. Okay, so Hosanna was there. Let me see if I can get a view of him. We can do both. I think we might be able to do both. I just want to keep an eye out on him, so I'm just watching. Okay. There's Hosanna. He's just like, maybe I'll go join them buffalo in the water. Ah! Now, A.B., you said maybe he's looking for fresh poo to roll in. Perhaps he's just missed a whole lot, though. I think he knew it was there. Oh, look, 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 he's running now. Why are you running? Run straight past the car. I think he was just trying to get a better view. I don't think he knew that quite that the buffalo were coming out of the water and just wanted to investigate. This is amazing, and I really hope that you're taking screenshots of this. This is the first time in my life I've ever seen leopards going after buffalo actively, well, sort of following them around. Waiting for the perfect moment. <laughs> oh, Lara Moore, you said maybe Hosanna is habituating the buffalo. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> That'd be a good strategy, hey? To have everybody just so relaxed around you and then all of a sudden, nah, grab one. You know, imagine an elephant just, you know, walking through a herd of impala and then grabbing one and eating it. It would be basically like the same thing. You'd never expect it. That's so cool. Okay, I'm going to quickly reverse. That's okay. That was a really pretty picture. I'd love to see some of those screenshots. So remember to share them. And also, remember that this is an interactive show, so you can chat to me, make comments and all sorts of wonderful things. You know how to do it. Hashtag Safari Live. Or on YouTube, you can chat to us using the chat as well. I'm just concentrating on reversing. Hang on. Stand by. Let me do this. Because he's in here, and then we can actually see all the buffalo. We might even be able to see a buffalo in the water. Not quite, a bit high up. Here he comes again. Who have you spotted? Running right past the car. Off he goes. Oh my, they're all running, they're all running. I don't know where Hosanna's gone. Where did he go? That way. All the buffalo are stampeding now if they saw him. I don't want to... 
Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Now we've got to find him because he's so camouflaged. I'm going to focus everybody, so I do apologize if I don't look at all of you. Where is he? He came bolting into this direction, buffalo running away because he exposed himself. Let's just, let's just sit and have a quick squiz. Although, he's also going to be completely invisible to me. No, no, I don't know where he is. You can hear the buffalo there. <sighs> oh, I'm not going to move. Buffalo running again. I want to see if I can see a spotted cat. I wonder if he's that side. Oh, I, I don't think the buffalo are, know really what's going on either. Hang on. Let's go forward. Sorry, Darby. Good, yeah? Watch out. They seem to be focused off to the right. Beefalo? Where's the leopard? Now, something that I almost so worried about is, of course, misplaced aggression. Buffalo are not angry at me, but they've been chased around by a leopard a little bit this morning. There he is! Go back this way. And they could end the end. Is it working? Is it working? Are we live? Are we live? Well, Hosanna is and the buffalo are. We're hoping that the stream has come back up, everybody. Sorry about all the gremlins. Typical, hey? Typical, but whatever. That's fine. We've still got Hosanna. We've still got the buffalo. So we'll treat you to a few extra minutes. So hopefully not too many of you log logged off and you're standing by. I got my tweet. I did send one out very quickly. And just to keep you all updated, because I don't think there's much reception in camp. And then, of course, lack of the Wi-Fi. How awesome is this? Now, he's settled down now. He, he doesn't seem to be looking at the buffalo anymore because there's only a couple of big bulls and a couple of big cows. But too much. But too big for Hosanna to take on. But that was incredible. I, I d did not ever think that I would see something like this. I mean, the leopards and the Mara, maybe, because they, they, I mean, they were catching young giraffe all the time. So it wouldn't surprise me if they slunk around in the grass trying to take the odd, um, the odd buffalo calf. Did you see how he reacted there? The ox peckers are up in the tree and one alarmed. You can hear it. Now that ox peck is saying leopard, because I don't know, they sound a bit strange when they tweet. What are you going to do, boy? Having a little sniff? And again, being so great the way that he comes right up to the cars. He doesn't mind it whatsoever. I'm sure he's a he's looking beautiful. Ah uh, I believe you're all saying thanks for the extra minutes. Absolutely no problem. I would never just leave you guys and drive away from something like this because I was also very excited to see what actually happens. But he's he's having a good smell around here. Maybe now's his opportunity to roll in the buffalo dung. Let's see if he is going to roll around. Right? Not snarling. That's the sort of phlegm and grimace we were telling you about. That outward expression. Look how close he is. So outward expression. Um, what are you doing? Back and forth. Back and forth. Jason, you said that Hosanna is pushing his luck. I definitely think that he is and needs to be careful. Although I suppose cats have, what, nine lives? So maybe he can take a chance. He can afford to take a chance here and there. Where to next, big boy? I don't really want to leave him because I'd love to come back this afternoon and, uh, you know, finish the sort of story. You're going to go for a drink. We'll follow him. He's just going right in front of the car. <laughs> Tell me, I'm trying to hide from you. Look, he's walking right next to me. Hello, Hosanna. Now, in cases like that... Oh no, he's sitting by the car now! <laughs> you do want to sit very still, of course, if a cat comes right next to you. No, man. 
Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to show you all how close he is. Stand by for this. Okay, I mean, we'll do something a little bit different. Hopefully I can get my camera on. So you... Let, me, let me turn. That is where Hosanna is right now. I can't really move. <laughs> That is honestly amazing. Now, a guide monkey, you're wondering if I think that the reason why Hosan is taking chances like this is because he's got, he's had nobody else to teach him. I don't, I mean, maybe, maybe Karula would have, uh, you know, said this is a buffalo, these are dangerous, be a little bit on the, the cautious side. Um, and we've seen her do that with crocodiles. In fact, we actually saw, remember that amazing sighting? I had a similar one, but Brent had the best one where Shongile and Hosanna were just getting a little bit too close for comfort to the water's edge. And Vladimir or Boris was in there. And Karula was snarling at the water, showing them that, no, this is dangerous. This is bad. So so maybe. But he's a, he's a big boy. And you know what? Why not? If he can take opportunity and take buffalo calves down, that's a great ma meal for him. I can't believe this. I really wish I could move, but um, I'm kind of stuck in this sort of spot. I'm even going to see if I can take a selfie because, you know, why would you not want a selfie like this? Hey, Darby. <laughs> it's so good. No, nature's darling. You said it's just Hosanna being Hosanna and that's why you absolutely love him. He is a darling. I like it. I think we can. Darling Hosanna. I feel like that's what my mother would call him. Hey, big boy. Um, so, David and I kind of haven't had any breakfast this morning. You didn't catch a buffalo. You didn't want to share. He's just looking at me going, I don't really care. Please stay here. The shade of the car is quite nice, in fact. <laughs> and again, one of the only places in the world where you can have sightings like this, the Sabi sand, it is magical. And I kept saying to you, the thing that I miss most about the Sabi sand is the intimacy that you get from the animals. And I feel like this is proof. Don't you? I think this is proof. I mean, where else do you have a herd of buffalo surrounding your car with a leopard, with elephants, with all these amazing things? Very cool. Very, very cool. But we've only got a minute left now, everybody. I hope you did enjoy the extra time. <laughs> I can't believe this. I mean, how I've really been welcomed back so well into the Sabi sand. I really have missed missed the bush down here. I uh, I kind of forgot how much that I I missed South Africa and all the wonderful things that we have here. Just a glimpse between the spare tire. <laughs> I think we might have to stick with him just for a little bit longer this morning just to figure out where he is going to go because I bet you all want to see him this afternoon on the Sunset Safari and he is such a character and who knows, maybe we come back, maybe he catches a buffalo. But for myself and Darby, it's been fantastic, filled with laughs, excitement and uh, the rest of the team. We'll see you, of course, same time, same place this afternoon for the Sunset Safari.